Hello everyone, I am Buck WSR Weezer. We're putting the do into do it yourself. Our do it yourself project today is on this here Poulon chainsaw, 18 inch bar, 40 cc, the wild thing. And this is just a, um, you know, homeowner type chainsaw. And it's got a problem that uh, we're going to fix together and this would probably be uh, applicable to just about well certainly all of the Poulon uh, brand chainsaws and maybe some others as well but the story is so this chainsaw was delivered to me because it wasn't running well and the problem was that it would uh, start fine but then it would bog down when you gave it the throttle and uh, so I decided probably just some carburetor adjustments. I made those adjustments, had it running really good, until I got to the point where I went to turn it off and in the appropriate fashion, and it would not turn off. Now you might have noticed already this wire just hanging here. Uh, the connector's missing on this end. Uh, it's cut right here. So um, this is part of the kill wire, and so the kill the kill switch wasn't working, so the thing just kept running. I got it running uh, very well, so so much that I didn't want to turn off. Sometimes these things are running so poorly, so when you let off the throttle, it just stalled out on their own. But I had tuned it up nice, and it was running great, but then it wouldn't turn off. Um, pull off the air cleaner here. Now I was running it with the cover off such as I have right now. And I knew this was part of the kill wire. And the other part of the kill, the kill switch mechanism is this wire right here. Uh, yellow wire runs down the back and over to the magneto. And it's connected to this metal bar that flexes back here. Now that's probably hard to see. But I was able to get it to stop because this the wire having a bare spot, where is it, right there, I was able to force it over and uh, touch that metal bar in there and ground it out. Well, I what I realized is the connector that's missing off of this slides into this hole right here in our kill switch, and uh, so it's missing. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that today, and I'm going to show you how to do it. But I'm going to do it in probably a less conventional method. So here's the part. It's the pool on 53005793. And you can see it's a complete wiring harness with the, uh, the two connectors on each end. And it runs up here from the kill switch down here along and uh, sort of buried there. So to replace that whole wire, we'd have to take this cover off here, make dig our way down to the magneto, which is not impossible, and that's probably the best way to do it. But I thought to myself, well, I don't need that entire harness. I just need, like, the ends that have this clip on them. I just need this connector right here that's missing and a couple inches of wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use this entire harness which I picked up for four or five bucks on eBay I'm just going to use a couple inches of of this black wire here it's this connector on the end that I really need here by my index finger so what I want to do is I want to cut this strip it back a little connect it and then I'm going to cut this right about here strip it back a little we'll connect those we'll solder it together and then put a piece of heat shrink uh, insulation over top of it so that may be, uh, you may you may scoff at that as a hokey repair, but you know what? Just a cheap homeowner chainsaw, and I just don't want to dig into it that deeply. All right, so you, if you're going to do this project, you'll need your wire cutters and dikes, and got a soldering iron. That should be interesting because I'm not real good at soldering. Got a, I got some heat shrinks. So I'll need one of those and uh, a little heat gun and we'll get started now so I, I already got the cover off and uh, I also took off the uh, air cleaner and air filter just to make us a little bit more room here 
and uh, we're going to put that in the on position and I'm going to put you up on a tripod so I can work with two hands. Now, I have not yet plugged in my soldering iron, so I'm going to do that real quick so that can heat up. And so now we'll we'll open this package. And this is a closer look at the uh, connector that we need and it simply slides into this hole and then the wire clips into this groove here that's all it really is so we're gonna cut this wire back and cut this back and we're gonna connect those two and hopefully that'll be all it takes I'm kind of doing it the lazy way, but again, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay, so I stripped back a little bit right there, as you can see. Now, cut that there. And they got to strip this back a little bit as well. All right, now before I get too far, don't want to forget to slide the piece of heat shrink tubing onto the one of the wires. Looks like I got more room on this side, so push it all the way. May not need a piece quite this big, but and I like to separate some of the strands, both sides. In a very imprecise fashion, kind of just twist them together. Now, I'm, I don't want to put the soldering iron here on this plastic, so I picked up this iron chisel, which will serve as kind of a workspace for us, maybe. As we try to apply some solder to that. So, I'm not sure if our soldering iron is ready, but it might be. Sounds hot. On this wet sponge. All right. Again, I don't really feel like a, an electronics guy, so I'm not real good at this. Sometimes I get Mrs. Weezer to do the soldering for me. For some reason, she likes it. All right. All right, I like that. That should work. All right, let me unplug that. And then the other problem is that we heated up those wires. Oh, wait. Now, our, our actually our glob of solder may be too thick to get our heat shrink tubing to come over it. Alright, so we still have a piece of bare wire there, and I'm just going to tape it over with some electrical tape. Alright, so there's our wire. I guess in retrospect, what I probably should have done is uh, put on a, a heat shrink tubing that's a, of a little larger diameter, but whatever. 
So let me take you down and I'll show you what you can do now. Little flashlight. So with this in the, in the run position, put it in a run position, which is lifting up here on it with your thumb. That's up. That's off. And when, it, if you can see in that hole, you can see the end of the the other the other uh, metal clip. Um, and so when it's in the off position and this is in there, they'll be touching. Continuity with ground will shut down the machine. So put it open, lift it up, and slide it in. And the wire just sort of tucks right in here. And that's it. So now, when you go to shut it off, that will make contact with the other piece of metal and uh, ground out the magneto and the engine will stop. Lift it up, no longer is continuity there and it'll run. Push it down, it'll stop. All right, so that's sort of a uh, a homemade kill switch uh, repair, but uh, it's about getting it done. Yeah, I just think that was a little simpler than taking this whole whole side apart to reroute the entire wire wire assembly. All right, so I'll see you outside for the trial. so it did kill that part's good that's what we were working on I think I need to adjust this carb a little bit more it was bogging down on me but uh, kill switch is now functioning as it should well that's it for today thanks for watching our my video here uh, our somewhat unconventional kill switch repair that turned out fine not a big deal and I hope this helps you on your DIY projects as well. Thanks for watching everybody and I will see you on the next video. Bye.